First, let's review the DNA, which is the instructions for making a part. The two halves of the DNA must match perfectly. If the two halves do not match, there is a spelling error. The P53 gene will attempt to correct the spelling error. The P53 gene, P means protein, and 53 is the approximate weight, is a spelling checker not unlike a computer spelling checker. When a cell is about to divide or is possibly damaged, it has the spelling checker examine the entire DNA. This may take eight hours. The spelling error rate of a healthy P53 is about one in a billion. The P53 must approve the DNA spelling for the factory to proceed. I am one billionth of a meter tall, so you can judge the size of the protein. It probably uses one of the Kinison motors to pull it along the DNA. Mr. P53, will you show us how you check the spelling of a word? The two halves match, so the spelling is correct. Mr. P53, will you show us how you fix a misspelled word? You see, it replaced the misspelled word. Now show us what happens when you can't fix a spelling error. You see, it tells a cell to kill itself. Unfortunately, the spelling checker misses about half the spelling errors in cancer cells. There is a major effort underway to try and improve the P53. First, a few words about batteries. Most of the cell's proteins are machines powered by batteries. This is a charged battery called ATP. It consists of an adenine with three phosphates attached. When the charged battery is delivered, the electrical bond of the last phosphate is broken and the electrical energy is transferred. Now, back to the battery chargers. The battery chargers are probably the most complicated machine in the cell. Most of the cell's proteins are operated by batteries. The batteries are charged in the mitochondria some cells, like muscle cells, have thousands of mitochondria. Some of the cells have billions of batteries that are charged three times a minute. Much of the volume of a heart muscle cell is taken up by the battery chargers. When a load of glucose arrives, it is fused to the mitochondria and the vesicle stripped. In this complex procedure, the glucose molecules are stripped down and the hydrogen ions are moved. They will be used to power the generators that charge the batteries. A glucose molecule will charge about 30 batteries. The motor generator sets are anchored in the mitochondria membrane. The principal components are the motor, the shaft, the generator, and the support that holds it all together. Let's look at this in more detail. This is a cross-section of the moving parts. The rotating shaft has a bump called a cam. As the shaft rotates, the cam pushes out the motor generator segments. This allows the discharged battery to be positioned for charging. As the cam continues to rotate, the segments close and the charging starts. When the cam returns to this position, the open segments allow the charged battery to drop out. Now, back to the battery chargers. The inner membrane of the mitochondria has many folds to accommodate the many battery chargers. The membrane has portals for the discharged batteries to enter and the charged batteries to leave. 
the hydrogen ions or proteins from the glucose fill the space between the layers. Because of the electrochemical gradient, they want to flow into the inner space. The motor generator set has the same principle as the water wheel, where the falling water turns the paddle wheel to generate power. The hydrogen ions seeking a lower gradient flow down the armature or paddle wheel, make one revolution, and are dumped into the inner lower gradient area. The lower portion of the shaft has a cam that pushes out the generator segments as it rotates. The charged battery is released from between the segments and finds its way out of the mitochondria. As the cam continues to rotate, the segments fall back into place. A discharged battery is placed in the vacated spot and the charging starts. When the rotating cam has returned, the segments are pushed out and the newly charged battery is dumped. The shaft rotates about 2400 RPM and three batteries are charged per revolution. Mr. Motor Generator, will you show us how you charge a battery? Thank you. Macrophage means the big eater. The macrophage are the cell's garbage collectors. They roam the cell's blood and lymph systems, breaking down worn out cells into amino acid building blocks to be used by these factories. They digest 100 billion worn out red blood cells a day. They are also on the lookout for invaders, such as a cold virus, which they absorb. A sample of the intruder's identification marker is placed on its outer surface. It alerts the immune system that the cell has been invaded. This one is eating a cold virus. I better stay out of the way or I will be next. This is not a complete machine, but the very complex propeller assembly used for propulsion. Microbes such as bacteria and archaea are propelled by appendages as shown. Microbes can move at 60 cell lanes per second, while the fastest land animal, the cheetah, can only move at 25 body lanes per second. The propulsion system is too small to be seen with a microscope, so what we have is based on the DNA instructions for making the parts. Starting at the outer surface is a bundle of filaments that rotate from 200 to 1000 RPM propelling the microbe. There are rings in the membranes that act as bearings and support the assembly. There is a hollow shaft that extends through both membranes. The details of the motor have not been identified. It is powered by a typical ATP battery. We will now see it in action. I have reduced my size to one billionth of a meter and am standing on a bacteria cell. Viruses are not capable of making copies of themselves. They must invade a normal cell and insert the instructions for making the virus into the factory. 
and make millions of copies of the virus. Our special guest, a T4 virus, only invades bacteria. Here comes one now. It positions itself so that the probe can penetrate the surface and eject its DNA. I better get out of the way. It's injecting the DNA instructions. It has finished. Look out, it's taken off. We don't want to hang around while the factories are making millions of copies of the virus. And that concludes our visit with some of the incredible machines that keep us running. Thanks for watching.